three, six, nine. The goose drank wine. The monkey chewed tobacco on a streetcar line. The line got broke. The monkey got choked. And they all went together in a little rowboat. I am uh, celebrating the resurrection of my voice. We lived through three voices. One, which is relatively like this. I'm still a little weak in the voice, but uh, substantially healed. Um, once worse than this is the Tom Waits voice, which is sort of what I was doing there. Tom Waits didn't write that bit of doggerel. That's a uh, jump rope rhyme. <laughs> it fits... Tom Waits' artistry just perfectly. I think it's fun. I think it's a whole lot of fun. The whole song, Clap Hands, is fun. But once worse than Tom Waits for me is Leonard Cohen. I can't even do Leonard Cohen normally, but oh man, when my voice is gone, I can do Leonard Cohen perfectly. There is a crack in everything, starting with my voice. So, Happy New Year, I say in full voice. Happy New Year. This is the 99th episode, I believe, of the Church of Splendor. This is essentially the second anniversary of the Church of Splendor. I am coming up on uh, four years since I wrote Man Alive. He sighs. But my world is substantially improved. I hope yours is substantially improved from 2015. Mine definitely is. My world is substantially improved from April 8th, 2012, the very first day of the Age of Splendor. I said so at the time. I am, I remain the only person who knows that we are living in the Age of Splendor, but it was inaugurated on that day, April 8th, 2012, the day I published Man Alive was the first day of the Age of Splendor. It remains for but seven billion more people to figure that out for everything to have changed. The hard part's done. I've changed my mind. Now all I have to do is change yours. My 2015 ended beautifully. I had a good year generally. I did a lot of interesting work, I think, this year. Um, further developing the ideas of family that I've been going through since 2013 or so, um, developing further on the disc ideas that I've been playing with disc since 2007, maybe. Uh, the first time I really talked about it in public was, my guess would be again 2013, and um, this year I wrote a, kind of a definitive gloss on my ideas about disc, um, and that was a big deal for me. I. Um, elaborated on the ideas of aesthetics, of art, the philosophy of art um, that I categorize under the headings Benedy and Malady, different ways of understanding stories. If you want to research this, selfadoration.com, once you get there, go to the search box and search for Benedy, B-E-N-E-D-Y, you'll find all you want, or look for the hashtag my kind of Benedy on Twitter and you'll find many posts from me on the subject of, of art. I did a ton of that this year. And um, then the other big thing I did this year, starting in mid-July, was um, hammer away on abortion, Ugh, again and again and again. Abortion every which way, but especially beating up on the Ayn Rand Institute for um, continuing to sanction abortion, even though it is clearly a um, utilitarian, cannibalistic genocide. my year with three, one, two, three, December 30th, December 31st, and January 1st. Three killer posts on abortion. Um, one on the um, consequences to us as people, as individual people and as a civilization, the consequences of this awful abortion culture. Um, one, again, eviscerating the Ayn Rand Institute, in particular, Yaron Brook, the uh, Grand Poobah. 
of that sacred and ceremonial Mason's Lodge. Frontery with Willie Knows No Bounds, so uh, New Year's stories in particular, Willie, really, um, puts on fancy hats for New Year's. And, uh, this New Year's, he takes confession and gives absolution, which I don't think is a terrible idea. I don't like theology, I don't like religion, I don't like supernatural claims. I think that there are social benefits to be realized from church. Here we are at the Church of Splendor. That there are social benefits to be realized from church that are um, worth keeping or worth um, adapting in any case. And um, confession is one of them. I don't know about formal confession, formal reconciliation, anything at all like that, but the sort of thing that Willie does, I mean, that's what Willie is. Willie is the father confessor for Western Civ. That's what he really is. Having these brutal conversations with people, the things that people never talk about, they talk about with Willie. All of this is vanity on my part. Willie is a joke on me. That's the, the real truth of Rambling Yem and Willie is that... Uh, I was making fun of myself in the mid-80s. And so I invented this fictional narrator, a fictional narrator, which is just funny. I invented this fictional narrator to write these fictional narrations allegedly about the uh, real-life conversations that he was having. I was really just making fun of me. I was uh, writing in this very um, ornate grand opera style at the time, really huge and descriptive and all the things that you expect from, from narrative fiction, that you expect from old style fiction. And um, I invented this rambling, gambling, willy voice as a way of making fun of myself. It was the exact opposite of the way I was writing at the time. So there was almost no narration, almost none in the original Willie stories. If you go back to the ones from the 80s, there's almost no narration. It's almost entirely dialogue. And that's what I was doing is I'm writing this massively narrative, rich, ornate, grand opera style of fiction. And as a way of seeking comic relief from my own writing, I invented this character who would make fun of the way I wrote by writing an entirely different way, by writing in a, the leanest, sparest possible way with nothing but dialogue. The original Willie stories were 90, 95% dialogue. And they're, they're substantially more narrative in Willie stories now. I've grown to love this character. I've grown to love everything about him. He took over, he took over my fiction, really. I don't really write much fiction, almost no fiction now, except for Willie stories. But for years, I mean, for 20 years, Willie has been 90 or 95 percent of all the fiction that I write and uh, certainly the most fun most interesting for me and I don't know what anybody else gets out of it and I know that I'm the, the effrontery is just so up front I mean effrontery out I can't even do the Latin on effrontery but I just love the word um, it's more precious to me even than arrogance which I also love but the in-your-face effrontery of a willy story I mean taking confession, giving absolution, and doing it in Latin, for God's sake. So much fun for me. I mean, I get nothing out of my life except what I get out of my life, and uh, to all appearances, everything that I'm doing in the last four years is appealing to almost no one. I got news for you. It's very appealing to me. And me is who I'm working for. So I got news yesterday that I was uh, being followed on Twitter by someone named Laura Lee. Wrote a poem about it. Laura Lee follows me. I've never felt such visibility. 
to capture her could set me free from my self-contained obscurity. So please, don't let's chase her away. And that's just fun for me. I'm full of poetry. I wrote these three abortion screeds, one after the next, and each one is more poetic than the last, and I am just full of poetry. And I wrote this poem and uh, wrote a post around it and uh, posted it on Self-Federation and linked to it from Twitter, blah, blah, blah. Uh, thinking, you know, here's my chance to offer an affectionate display to someone I really do want to pay attention to me. I mean, I don't know anything about her, but I want ordinary mainstream conservatives paying attention to me because I have so much to offer them. I have so much to offer the mainstream conservative argument by taking away their stupid theological validations. I believe what you want in terms of theology, but don't expect to persuade anyone who's not already going to your church. It's just silly to attempt to make theological arguments in a secular environment. We are a secular political environment. We do not, religion is free in the United States, but it's free to trade, free to travel. Take all you want, there's plenty more for everybody, and you don't get to push it on anybody. The most you get to do is thump your Bible and say, have you been washed in blood? It's the most you get to do. And so if you hope to persuade anyone of anything, you need arguments that are going to persuade them, not arguments that persuade you, arguments that persuade them. And the arguments that persuade everybody are the ones that they can't take away, they can't object to, they can't reject out of hand by saying, I don't believe in magic. So my view is that... Uh, Conservatives should be all over me because I provide secular arguments for the things that they want to oppose. I provide arguments that their opponents cannot reject, cannot object to in any way at all. I meet with no resistance. I mean zero. I get sniping. I get vituperative insults. I get massive, length, massively lengthy vituperative insults on Facebook from people who behave, it would seem to me, as if they were my jilted girlfriends. But I don't get any sort of argument from anybody, and I would think that that would be uh, of some value to people who are losing everything all the time. Apparently not, because Laura Lee no longer follows me. I pointed out to her that I wrote for her the Jenny Kissed Me of the 21st century, so let's do Jenny Kissed Me so we can compare. Jenny kissed me when we met, jumping from the chair she sat in time you thief who loves to add sweets to your list, put that in. Say I'm weary, say I'm sad, say that health and wealth have missed me. Say I'm growing old, but add. Jenny kissed me. I think that's better than mine. I think mine is pretty good, but I think that's better. But they're really both the same poem as a... Uh, Hungry poet, unknown, visits Robert Louis Stevenson and writes a poem about his wife in order to kiss the big boss's ass in hopes of getting some attention. What I was doing with Laura Lee, so maybe she was wise to drop me. But I got the poem out of her, and this is the way that I win. I win everything. I win all the time. I always win because... I already got what I wanted before I even engaged with you. I already had the poem. I, there's a bunch of, in the post, if you go read it, there's a bunch of good poetry in the post too, including the idea that uh, Laura Lee, as it turned out, was an evanescent effervescence. And these are words that can sound beautiful when you hear them in your mind's ear when you read them silently, but uh, you try to read me out loud. This will be an experience that you will uh, remember if not enjoy.
but I am full of poetry for 2016, and uh, really at this time anyway, full of love for children, so I've been noodling for months with the idea of writing children's books. I've been writing children's stories and children's books day by day, week by week. But I realized this weekend, for the new year, that I want to write a book of fart jokes for um, boys aged 5 to 8 or 9. I think about families with two or three boys, even if they have girls, but with two or three boys. And uh, separated by ages, it's difficult to have a bedtime book that's good for, if you have a five-year-old brother and an eight-year-old brother, it's difficult to have a bedtime book that's good for both of them if they sleep in bunk beds or uh, twin beds or whatever in the same bedroom. But the book that I'm thinking of, the title is When My Mother Made Beans. If you think of uh, the Root or Shel Silverstein books, you kind of get an idea of what I'm planning, but uh, a book of poetry about a uh, all of the sights and scenes that come together in a delicious melange when my mother made beans. All of which is by way of celebrating the second anniversary of the Church of Splendor without forgetting that we're here in pursuit of splendor and pursuit of fun. And, uh, funny idea for me, a really funny idea, a really brutal Loki joke, to fill up a, a bedroom with fart jokes at bedtime. So next week we'll talk about something really serious persuade ourselves that we are serious minds, but this is the Church of Splendor, and the whole idea is to be serious about joy. So for Jenny, for Laura Lee, for Leonard Cohen, for Tom Waits, and for you, I'll talk to you again next week.